This may, this may sound a little bit woo-woo, and it's not necessarily a, a, a god's philosophy, but it is a certain character's philosophy that is expressed at some point in this season. Um, and by virtue of this having to be so generally applicable, this is going to be a slightly general answer, but um, that what that character says, and not giving away who it is, is don't lose your light. Um, and that could be all a bit like, oh, he's talking about light. But no, I, in a very, very personal sense, I think don't lose what makes you you. Don't lose what makes you you. Hold on to that and let that let that come through. And that can sound a little bit woo-woo and rah-rah, but I think that's genuinely something important to bear in mind in a world that's trying to make you whatever it tells you to be. My word. Um, how do I feel? Uh, the character, I would say, is an absolute gold gift plate to play with, just in terms of how much... I mean, you get to play with the mind of a deity, also a mind that has constant access to a source of information that moves faster than the human brain can process. Um, also, a very, very young character who's only known worship. It's an amazing character to play with. Um, in short, I love it. It's a hell of a lot of fun. He's a great character to have so... He's a lot of fun. It's Although, it's important to highlight as well that the two sides of the coin, a lot of the... Uh, the, the, the artifice that comes out in the character in terms of how he interacts with others is usually based in some form of pain. No one is the way they are for no reason. So that's something to bear in mind, and maybe we'll get to see a bit of it this season, who knows? Um, I love it. He's great. He's a lovely character to play with, yes. Well, I think we all already know Bill Quiz often listens to Maneater. It's just one of those songs. Um, actually, they played that in the makeup room the day that we were shooting her introduction. So, Maneater, that's the answer, Jazz. Yes. No. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to switch it up and give you a definite answer here, but that's the great thing about the show, about belief about how that continuously changes and evolves. Um, you will see, you will see how loss of belief affects the gods. That I can say for certain. Any god or goddess to add, can we add Beyonce just as Beyonce? Because <laughs> we can all agree she's pretty much a goddess, right? Okay, cool. Answer. I hate the House on the Rock. I didn't get to shoot there, so I'm still bitter about it. They built a set on stage in Toronto and didn't take me to Wisconsin. So I hate the House on the Rock. But Ricky loves it, so he'll tell you all about it. Are you saying you don't like Toronto? I love Toronto. I just would have liked to have gone to House on the Rock. <sighs> House on the Rock was as it, as it seems. It's incredible, wacky, weird in every single way. And every room just gets stranger and stranger. Everything's uphill, which is another kind of weird, magical thing about that place. Um, and yeah, I, I, we, we saw very little of it. We were there a whole week. We saw so much, and yet only t barely touched the surface. So. Anyone passing through Wisconsin should definitely check it out. Mad Sweeney and the Moons. That's a band name right there. Mad Sweeney and the Moons, I like it. That is a band name. Uh, yeah, there's definitely, of course, there's further development. Um, we ended season one where uh, Laura said she'd like a moment alone with her husband, and that's where we pick up season two and uh, things get worse from there. Uh, Sweeney and Laura link up and realize they have a, a enemy in common and the process of season two is kind of their path towards revenge. And towards the end of the season, Sweeney and Shadow have some more interaction that uh, deepens and richens the, their, their relationship together and, uh, and it comes to a very satisfying uh, but shocking end. I had to think about what happened then, because I, I was engaged. <laughs> he won me up. I'm watching it now. <laughs>